Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today it's all about taking a stencil with a pattern and repeating it, and some of the tips and tricks to make it easy to cover any size space with any size stencil that has a repeating pattern on it. Now, at the very end of the video, you're gonna see how I handle it when I get a background that I absolutely fall in love with, so much so that I don't wanna put anything else on top of it. I grabbed one of the backgrounds I started a while ago in my art journal. This one was made with washi tape and paint. And then I'm just having some fun writing, scribbling, adding lines here and there, absolutely taking a kindergartner's approach and just letting loose, having fun on the page, not overthinking it, not worrying about what this will become, but just having fun enjoying my art supplies. Now, one of the things I realized I wanted after this was I wanted drips and splots and splats, but I didn't want to wait for anything to dry. So that means I'm going to use alcohol inks to do it because it'll make some great little specks and splots and it will dry extremely quickly, especially in comparison to acrylic paint drops. I'm going to bring in a 9 by 12 stencil and I could just put it on one side of the journal and then write on the other, but there's a reason why I choose to put this in the middle. Why on earth would I put this in the middle and create more work to do the stenciling around the edge when I could have just put this stencil on one side and then on the other side? Well, it was something that I learned when I was putting ceramic tile down on floors when we worked on our house many years ago. And that is you start in the middle and you get everything lined up or just the way you want it in the middle where people are really gonna see it. And then you work your way out because invariably things end up not lining up perfectly or there's some kind of glitch or problem or this or that or how things fit on the edge here and there. But if they're all the way on the edge, people don't notice them as much. But when it is smack dab in the middle of the page, mm, that can kind of stand out. So if I was putting it on one side of the page and then the other, I'd have that seam running right down the middle. And that would draw people's eyes right there immediately. But if I take that stencil and pop it in the middle and then work around the edges, all of a sudden it looks fantastic. Even though there are imperfections in it, nobody notices them. I'm now going to take heavy body white paint and I'm going to go over the whole thing. Now, why do I choose heavy body white paint for this? Is there some really big reason? Yes, there actually is. The big reason is, is a thick paint is less likely to run underneath your stencil, which means a thick paint gives you clear, crisper lines easily. The other reason is I'm putting white on top of all of these colors, and I really want to block out the colors where I'm putting the white. So that's why I'm going to lift up the stencil and kind of peek and check and see if I'm getting as much coverage as what I want. And there are a couple areas where I think, no, I really want a little more white paint. I want to cover up more of what's under there. And that's why I just put the stencil right back on top and then added another layer of white paint anywhere that I thought the paint wasn't thick enough. Basically, it wasn't blocking out what was underneath it. So does that mean you have to use a heavy body paint to do this? <laughs> Absolutely not. Use whatever paint you're comfortable with. I'm just letting you know why I choose the one that I choose. So now that I've got the center all done, I like how it looks. The next thing is to continue the pattern around the rest of the page. So this is a pattern where I can line things up. So I'm just gonna put that stencil on top there and then fill in the rest to the bottom. I chose to use white for this one, but I very easily could have used, say, black. And a dark color covers up stuff underneath it much more easily than putting a light color on top. Now, when I get the stencil positioned for the next side, I want you to notice how I kind of position it, then set it down. And the reason why I was doing that is because none of this paint is dried. I'm not waiting for stuff to dry. I'm letting that paint stay nice and wet. But as long as I get the stencil positioned about where I want it before I set it down, that means it's not going to touch any of the area that's painted. It's mostly going to stay in the dry spots. So it makes it really easy to keep going and not wait until everything is completely dry before you put the next part of the pattern on. Another trick for you to save you some time when you're trying to line up patterns, especially if you're doing little bits here and there, kind of like I am on these corners and that kind of thing. If you're ever feeling like it's not lining up or you're trying to figure out the orientation of it, just take the stencil and position it back over the original stenciling, the very first thing that you did. And that'll help you get the stencil oriented just the way you need it to be. So then you can just slide it down and continue on with your pattern. This stencil, by the way, is from Stencil Girl Products, and it is a part of this month's Stencil Club offering that I'm honored to have been in collaboration with Mary Beth Shaw on. 
If you're new to Stencil Club, what it is is a large 9x12 stencil, a 6x6 stencil, and a 4x4 stencil every month that's exclusive just to the club. There are all sorts of other goodies and perks in being in Stencil Club, and you can find out all the details and information over at stencilgirlproducts.com. I am absolutely in love with this background. I love the pattern. I love the color. I love the things buried under there. So much so, I don't want to put anything on top of this. Not a single thing. I don't want to put it on there. But I also know that this isn't finished. This is a background. So what am I going to do? I'm going to enjoy it just the way it is for a while. Meaning I'm going to leave it be because I love looking at it. And part of the reason why I art journal, why I make things is for the enjoyment. And if I'm enjoying that layer, by golly, I'm going to take that full advantage, take full advantage of that. So for you, if you're ever making a beautiful layer and you just love looking at it, enjoy it. Now, at some point down the road, I'll open this journal up and I'll decide that it's time to put something on top of it, but I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to push it. I'm going to get the joy from this. I'm just going to enjoy it as long as I want. And when I'm ready, no time limit, no pressure. When I'm ready, then I'll add more to it. And I encourage you, if you've ever got an art journal page that you're just absolutely in love with, you just can't stop looking at it and you don't want to add anything to it, even if you know it's not finished, just enjoy that. What a gift to have that happening in your, in your art journal. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. Thank you.